Graduation is a landmark moment for every high school student. When I wrote the first draft of this speech in February, I planned to start the speech talking about excitement of the new journey ahead and what the next year will bring. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. To be honest, I think that we find ourselves in a world today that makes this conversation much more relevant, not less. The conclusion of your time in high school represents the beginning of a new journey. Some of you will move on to trade, others the military, others to college, or maybe your journey starts down an uncommon path, such as starting your first few months of this journey in the midst of a global pandemic. Regardless of where you end up, most of you will encounter one of the worst, most terrifying aspects of joining a new class, group, or association, the icebreaker. As an introvert with social anxiety, I typically prefer to sit alone in the corner, but each time I get a new job or attend a class, I'm forced to share two truths and a lie or come up with some adjective that best describes myself. Since I'm not typically you know, overcome with joy, I usually forego joyful Josh with jumping Josh, because uh, I honestly can't think of any other adjectives that begin with J. As much as I hate icebreakers, there was one in particular that caught me by surprise during one of my graduate classes. This particular icebreaker was called, Who Are You? The rules of the game were simple. Person one would ask, Who are you? And person two would have to answer with a new truth about themselves. Person one would ask, Who are you? And person two would give a new truth. And they repeat until the time is up. As luck would have it, I got to enjoy this experience with my professor. What I didn't realize was the power of this activity. At first, I perceived this game as a class socialization exercise to get to know each other, but it quickly took a sharp turn. As my professor relentlessly asked, who are you, with every round, I felt that she was peeling off layers of my defenses, exposing the raw soul underneath. And it led me to ask the question, who am I? Before you begin the journey ahead of you, I'd like to share two thoughts with you in regards to answering this question. First, love yourself. And second, don't use bad language. To start, I actually want to do this icebreaker with you. There are two rules. Number one, you must always ask, answer the question each time it is asked. Number two, you cannot repeat an answer. Here we go. Who are you? 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 When I redid this exercise myself, I started with labels, titles, references to hobbies, but by the third or fourth question, I was starting to run out of answers. I think regardless of what your first answers were, they likely failed to describe you. Over the years of our lives, we've created numerous defenses and barriers to protect anyone, even ourselves, from the truth of who we are deep inside us. Even though I'm 33, I still feel like there's this little kid inside of me that's afraid of the great big world outside. 
Many of you have talked to me about college advice or what you should do for a career, but honestly, I've been asking the same thing of myself for years. I've pushed aside the tiny, skin and bones, energetic kid that was deeply emotional but loved to think about great things and pretend acting out Star Wars with his friends. He also had a serious anger problem, and I'm actually kind of glad that I set that side of myself apart. But who is the little kid inside of you? Not the teen, the five-year-old. Are they quiet, scared, social, compassionate, emotional, energetic, reflective? What do they enjoy? Going on walks, cooking, reading, drawing, working out, writing, playing games? What do they feel that they have to do to feel accepted by everybody else? Good grades, clean room, patiently sitting still, having lots of money, surrounding themselves with lots of friends, or maybe just being outside. If you had the chance to make everyone completely forget everything about your past and restart, who would you be? And would it make the little kid inside of you feel safe enough to step out into the open? At this point, I originally planned this dramatic moment where I'd ask everyone to take off their cords and sashes, so you're all adorned in identical black or white gowns, and so you look exactly like everyone else around you. Seriously though, I, like, I've actually been thinking about this for months, this big display with people looking around, and everyone looks exactly the same. Um, but honestly, I think right now might actually be an even better moment. Because right now, we're both sitting watching this video as equals. No matter what your background, your GPA, discipline record, athletic success, each of you equally deserves to have a good life and deserves to, as one of you recently said on a QOTV, do what you love and love what you do. As powerful as that moment would have been, where we find ourselves right now creates an even more powerful moment. For the last few months, I've talked a lot to a lot of people about a heightened degree of de depression, anxiety, and fear. I think part of this is because we are feeling trapped at home for so many months. And the worst part about it is who we are trapped with. And I'm honestly not talking about parents or siblings. You've been trapped at home with yourself. And for months, we've had time to sit with little else to do but ponder who we are and what life holds for each of us. And now here's the first lesson. Love yourself. Not because of your accolades, not because of your words, not because of your athleticism, or because you have earned the love and respect of others. Love yourself because you deserve to be loved as you are. And nobody can take that away from you. I know for some of you this is a big ask. When you look in the mirror, when you stare at your reflection, you look at it with disgust. You feel dirty, ugly, worthless, stupid, inadequate, pathetic, unlovable. You've made mistakes, you've messed up so many times, you have no idea what you're going to do in your life. The thought of leaving high school is terrifying because it's entering the world of the big unknown and you don't know what evils may live around the next corner. Love yourself. For others, you've been waiting for this moment for years. You finally get to get cut loose and do whatever you want to do without the chains of school or home dragging you down. No more rules or restrictions. You're ready to just tear into a new world and take control of it all. Now that all of that has felt like it's been ripped away, and you don't have the classes, activities, sports, your life has revolved around for years, and you've been left alone, Love yourself. 
I recently watched uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor. It's a fantastic documentary on Fred Rogers, the, the brilliant and loving man who wrote and starred in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Highly recommend it. On love, Rogers said, when we love a person, we accept him or her exactly as is. The lovely with the unlovely, the strong with the fearful, the true mixed in with the facade, and of course, the only way we can do it is by accepting ourselves that way. Rogers also had a song called It's You I Like. I think this summarizes my message far better than I ever could. And before I even start reading it, if you're going to hear this and say nobody would ever say that about me, you're wrong. In the documentary, Rogers recited this to a quadriplegic child named Jeffrey Erlinger, who sat in a wheelchair in front of Rogers on his show. Rogers sang this song, staring not into Jeffrey's eyes, but the very soul of who Jeffrey was. And I honestly believe Fred Rogers would say the exact same words to each and every one of you. It's you I like. It's not the things you wear, it's not the way you do your hair, but it's you I like. The way you are right now, the way deep down inside you, not the things that hide you, not your toys, they're just beside you. But it's you I like. Every part of you, your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new, I hope that you'll remember even when you're feeling blue. It's you I like. It's you yourself. It's you. It's you I like. And now lesson two. Don't use bad language. And if you've ever taken one of my classes, you may be a bit surprised by this statement. But let me clarify what I mean by bad language. Bad language doesn't come in four-letter words. Bad language is any language that makes someone feel bad for being them. A number of you have already heard this speech, but for those who haven't, there's only one word that I do not allow in my classroom, and it actually is a four-letter word. And that word is easy. It's incredibly important to me that my class be a safe space for all students. I want my students to feel safe asking questions, voicing frustrations, and showing emotion because I want them to know it is safe for them to make mistakes and safe for them to be themselves. In fact, I was recently touched by a video a squad of students sent me during Teacher Appreciation Week. Not just because it had some funny, awkward moments in me from throughout the year, but for the final statement that was projected. Thank you for allowing us to be us without judgment. Now, they also called me Dennis, but that's a much longer story. The reason I don't like the word easy is because easy takes away that safety. And honestly, students often use this word as a positive response to understanding a lesson or a difficult concept. It is an expression of positive emotion felt by the person making the statement. And I'm not saying they shouldn't be proud of what they've done. They definitely should be. But easy also sends a powerful message, an unintended message, to everyone else. Easy tells everyone else that if they are not able to accomplish the task, they are not good enough, smart enough, creative enough, or athletic enough to do it easily as well. I remember being at a beach with friends in college. One guy decided he wanted to learn how to do a standing backflip, so a bunch of guys grouped together and tried to accomplish the task. Honestly, most of them winding up flat on their back. Attempt after attempt, this group of, of, of men made baby steps of progress towards that final goal. But then Joe came. Joe was a starting wrestler at Drexel University. He was a 150 pound monster. He walked up to the group and asked what they were doing. 
or <laughs> at least trying to do. Upon hearing the goal, Joe said, huh, let me try. Now, his first attempt wasn't a perfect bat flip, but he definitely landed on his feet and gave off a big smile. But soon after, the group of guys dispersed. Joe is a great guy, super friendly and loved to help other people, but he completely unintentionally changed the atmosphere of the task. You see, when all the guys were first attempting the backflip, they were all equally bad at it. The fact that nobody could complete the task meant that all of them had the ability to improve and that it was going to take work for every single one of them to get better until they could all rejoice with the first member of the pack that was able to do the flip. But when Joe completed his flip, that entire framework shattered. No longer was this a pack of men conquering a significant challenge. They were a pack of duds not athletic enough to do a simple flip. The point is, never make anyone feel bad for being them. They may not be your best friend, they may be quirky, but they deserve to be themselves. And nobody has taught me this lesson better than my students. Remember, every single person is on a journey. If they're on a journey, a journey to become the kind of person everyone wants them to become, they will live life enslaved to the whims of others and will never find fulfillment because it is impossible to be what everybody else wants you to be. But you, if you are on a journey to loving yourself, becoming the best version of you, complete with your perfect imperfections, you may find yourself doing what you love and loving what you do. Leave behind those that try to turn you in what they want you to be, and find those who love you and embrace you for being you. Because honestly, you are a pretty amazing person, and you deserve it. I want to conclude by telling you how to win the who are you game. Okay, so it's, a, it's an icebreaker. You can't really win an icebreaker. But I do think there's a correct answer to the question. And the catch is, you have to play the game with yourself. You have to stand in front of a mirror, look yourself square in the eye, until you're able to look past all of those layers of defense. Look underneath all of the scars, beyond your imperfections and the mistakes of the past, down to the raw soul that lies underneath. And when you finally see that little kid inside, ask, who are you? And in response, stand tall and proudly state, who am I? I am me.